Chapter 12. Live a little of your future dream life now, even if you think you're not ready. Quote, your entire life only happens in this moment. The present moment is life itself. Yet people live as if the opposite were true and treat the present moment as a stepping stone to the next moment, a means to an end. Unquote. Eckhart Tolle We're in Athens, Greece, as I type this on my ancient laptop. Okay, maybe ancient in this city isn't quite the right word. I am as guilty as most of us who can quickly be less satisfied with the present because it's not quite what I had envisioned it to be in the past. Did you catch that? In the past, I envisioned a future, and yet, just like the word tomorrow, it never is here. The future, by definition, doesn't exist. It's always tomorrow. It's always ahead of us. We will never catch it. So what do we have left? The present. I had envisioned a life where I could be traveling in a faraway place, waking up early and creating, probably writing and publishing books like there was no tomorrow. Ha, <sighs> funny guy, right? And, oh, I don't know, going on a bike tour of the city with my family and ending up in a colorful bar later that same night and stirring up raucous conversations with strangers. Oops. That's exactly what happened yesterday. One of my favorite books is titled Secret Bus to Paradise. I wrote it many years back now, but I mention it because even back then, I was living my dream and not only dreaming about it. It wasn't a bus to a paradise that we see in the magazines or on Instagram. I made my own private paradise. It's a great little story I can highly recommend. Ha! I'm laughing a little bit to myself here as I'm recommending one of my own books. But there you have it. That is part of my dream. I have books I have written already that are good, and I recommend them inside of other books. How did that happen? Because I didn't wait to write the perfect book. Well, I did spend about nine years not writing, but I finally started writing on November 1st, 2012, and kept going. Some books aren't great, some are good, and some are brilliant. Seriously, yep, I'm saying that about my own work. Yet, had I waited to only write the one perfect book, it most likely would never have appeared because I'd be so caught up in hoping, trying, and fiddling to make it perfect, whatever perfect means, that it wouldn't be in your hands. It would be in a drawer, and I'd probably still be living in San Francisco, and frustrated that I never took the leap to become the writer I had always dreamed of becoming. How did we get here from starting out with the day in Athens? Because although I'm still not there yet, I have learned that there is an imaginary place. It's that dream, future, fantasy place that, hold on to your hats, doesn't actually exist. If I keep waiting for that perfect moment, the glorious scene, usually influenced by movies where, I don't know, fireworks go off in the distance as I type the last word of my award-winning novel while I sip whiskey, I don't even like whiskey, on the veranda of my lake house while the water ripples the shimmering moonbeams, stop. Please stop. I'm in Athens. I'm writing. 
I have many books. I'm with my family. We're eating giros. We're doing bike tours. I even managed to skip dinner the first night, wake up early, meditate, and write a few chapters. No fireworks, no lake, no dream as I had envisioned at some point in the past. Yet, here I am, living some form of that dream in the present day. Dear reader, this is one of the hardest things about being a writer or a creator. Getting the message across or through or getting it to really land as I hope it will or can. There are tidbits in life, in chapters of books, in scenes in movies or moments in real life that we somehow never forget. They sink in. We can't forget them even if we wanted to. This is an important chapter. One of the biggest reasons I write books at all is to share experiences that I have had, mistakes that I have made, and of course successes that I have enjoyed with you so that you recognize the mistakes more quickly and still make them, but realize what they are and move on to take the chances to dare to create and get to the successes more quickly and hopefully less painfully than I did. The author. Back to the title of this chapter. Live a little of your future dream life now. Please, pretty please, don't wait for the fireworks and the lake and the veranda. Of course, dream your dreams. Envision them for the future. But then let them arrive in pieces, probably not in order, and certainly not exactly as you had envisioned it. I can honestly and truly say that I am living my dream right now. Today here in this apartment in Athens, as I type on my broken laptop and a woman across the way is overwatering her plants to the extent that she's washing the cars below. I'm writing. I'm creating. I'm taking this moment, this chapter, to remind myself, to remind you, to capture, to sneak in, to secretly and maybe quietly recognize, relish, and celebrate the tiny wins, the successes that resemble, if only in the slightest way, the dreams of your past that are happening in the present day of your real life. This book has ideally become a clear path forward, offering up a methodology, a roadmap, a path for you to get some clarity, take some action, and build some confidence so that you may live a little of your future dream right now. Possible. Live your future life in the past impossible. Live your entire future life in the present. Re-possible. Live your future life in the present, if only a tiny bit. P.S. The bar last night with the Uzo was one of the most beautiful bars I have ever seen in my life. I'll share a photo in the bonus content.